G'day there. You're watching the Aussie Vim Guru, and today we're running through a Dynamo tutorial for Autodesk Revit, and today we're looking at creating dependent view sets using Dynamo. Um, before I get started, I just want to say thanks to um, one of my followers who's been in touch with me, who gave me the idea for this video. So um, thanks, Jose, much appreciated, and look forward to hearing from you in the future. So what are dependent views? So for those that aren't aware, when you duplicate a view in Revit, you have the option to duplicate it as a dependent view, which basically sort of springs off the floor plan. It remains associated to the floor plan as well. So any change that happens in the overall floor plan also happens in the dependent view. Um, so essentially it's sort of like a snapshot. And the reason that we use them on projects is because often at certain scales, we can't fit our building on one sheet. So we use dependent views as a way to break up our floor plans in order to fit them upon the sheet. So this is specific to floor plans. We don't tend to use them in many other types of views. Um, and essentially you'll see the same things like tags, dimensions, as you overlap your views. So you can see here that if I take my floor plan out of the Autodesk model and put it at 1 to 20, I can't fit it on a sheet, but I can fit one zone of it on a sheet. So we use scope boxes to control dependent views typically so that they remain consistent between different floors and different series. So you can see here that I've set up three scope boxes in the model I'll be using today called zone A, B, and C. Um, and we'll be using those. So essentially we're looking for a way for Dynamo to establish these dependent views and also apply the scope boxes to them as well. So you can see here the three zones that I've sort of divided my floor plan into. Um, and the reason that we're looking at using Dynamo to do this instead of the apply dependent views tool is because the apply dependent views tool remind, it relies on some level of setup to be used. So depending on which type of floor plan you're using, whether it be floor plan, RCP, or area plan, I believe that until you have a set of dependent views available on at least one view that has a common type related to those, it won't give you the option to apply the dependent view to any others. It'll give you this warning saying there's no valid views. So we're using Dynamo in order to do this and we're using data shapes to generate a user interface as well. So we'll be using data shapes today for our UI and then we'll be using Archilab for the duplicate as dependent view option. And we will be doing some data processing between these two nodes. So we're using version 2.0.3 today, but I believe that the logic of this script should work in most versions of Dynamo. So without further ado, let's just jump into our model. Um, so I've got a Revit model here split up into three scope boxes. So if you're doing the same script, um, feel free to open the advanced architectural model. Actually, I think this is the basic architectural model. And then just split the model into three zones using scope boxes. And I'm calling mine zone A, zone B, and zone C, respectively. And I've just set up a bunch of floor plans, ceiling plans, and area plans. If I wanted to make a dependent view usually, I'd right click, duplicate as a dependent. Then I'd have to rename my dependent view to suit. And then I'd apply a scope box of some sort, such as zone A. And that would generate what is a dependent view upon this, this plan. And essentially the way dependent views work is whatever happens in the, the overarching view also happens in the dependent view as well. Uh, so it's different to having like two floor plans because the annotations aren't shared. Okay, but we're going to set up a Dynamo script that will generate dependent views for all of our RCPs, area plans, and floor plans. But we'll get, give the user the option to pick which ones they want to use. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is get some view types. So we're going to get the view type drop down, and we're going to get our floor plans first. And we're also going to get ceiling plans. Actually, I'll do one of these first. So what we're going to do with the floor plan is we're going to get all views by type. So essentially we're getting all of our views that are of the type floor plan. From there, we're going to get the element name of those floor plans. And then we're also just going to get the code block to generate a, a name in our user interface for this. So the formula for the code block will just be, in this case, floor plan, uh, semicolon, space, apostrophe, plus the name. So I need to actually add a variable here. So this will be plus name of view and we need to plug this into our variable and essentially we should get a, a readout of floor plan with the name of the view so this is to feed into our user interface but what we're going to do from there is just make two more copies of these and one of them will be our rcps and one will be our areas so this one we need to drop down and replace with ceiling plan and this one will drop down and replace with area plan and then we go into this naming convention just change floor plan to area plan and floor plan to ceiling plan so essentially we have three sets of views at this point from our model. So what we need to do now is create two lists. One of them is the views themselves. The other is the name of those views for our user interface. So we're just gonna make two list creates with three options in each. And we're gonna flatten the output of those as well. 
So we'll just generate another set of those. Okay, so our first list is going to be the views. So we'll go and grab all those three types of views and the other will be the names of those views plus the description of what type of view they are. So essentially this is for our data shapes routine. So we've got a name of our views and then we have the views themselves as Dynamo sees them with their element IDs. Okay. So now we need to actually go and start building our interface. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a UI list view. I'll just try UI list. Uh, looks like it shares some keywords. So UI list view data. And all we need to do with this is just generate a couple of fields. So the first one will be views to apply scope boxes to. And we'll just make the height 300. So the only thing we need to input here is we'll input the name of what to call it. Uh, we'll input the height as 300 in the optional height. And what we'll do here is populate the values as our views and the keys as their description. So essentially this is what we see in our user interface, but this is what will get pushed through the user interface to the next step. So this lets the user pick which views they want to apply to, uh, the scope boxes to as dependent views. We need another list view from here though. So we're gonna copy our list view down and just disconnect all of these. And we'll just generate a, another copy of this. Just get rid of that list flatten. So these are gonna be our scope boxes. So we haven't got our scope boxes yet, but we will in a sec. So we'll just make this one 100 higher because there shouldn't be that many scope boxes. So the name is this, the height is this. We need to get our scope boxes. So we're just gonna get a string and type in scope boxes. And we're gonna do a category by name. And we'll get the category of scope boxes. And then we just need to get a all elements of category. There we go. Great. And then we just need to get the name of each of those as well, for the same reason that we need the keys and the values. So the, the values are the scope boxes, but the keys are their name. Um, and otherwise the rest of these are pretty much good as they are. Most of these come in at false in data shapes and the one at the end sorts them in alphabetic order as true. So we're just gonna keep those defaults. So now we're gonna put these two together for our user interface. So we're just gonna plug in those two in a list with list create. And then we're gonna get a multiple input form plus plus. So these are our inputs. And we just need a couple of fields here. So we need a Boolean which we can toggle to activate our user interface when we're testing. So by default, I'm gonna make this true because we're gonna run this in a sec. So I'm just gonna call this select views and scope boxes. And we'll call the, the run button apply as dependent. So the user knows that when they hit this, this is what's gonna happen. And we'll add a cancel button as well. For the size, we'll just make it 800 by 800. So quite a big UI because there'll be quite a lot of views um, so we'll just add our button text, our cancel button text, and our max height, and our optional width. And I might just add my logo as well as a file path. So you can add your logo or your company's logo and feed that into the optional logo field. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll actually run this script just to show you what we get. So essentially we get something that looks a bit like this. So there's our logo, here's our scope boxes. So let's say we want to apply zone A, B, and C to all of our plans. So if I click apply as dependent, what happens is that the user inputs get fed through in two sublists. Our first sublist is our views and our second sublist is our scope boxes as elements. So now we need to process these elements. So I'm just gonna disable, uh, actually I'll keep my UI enabled, um, but we're gonna get a code block and we're just gonna say list square bracket zero, list square bracket one. This is so we can split apart our inputs into our views and our scope boxes respectively. Now we need to start processing these. So we're gonna to need to cycle both of our lists because we basically need an equal number of views and scope boxes to be applied. So we're gonna do a list count of both. So we're gonna count the number of views and also the number of scope boxes. Because for each view we need a scope box and for each scope box we need a view. We're gonna do them the other way around actually because for each scope box we're gonna cycle our view. So we're gonna do a list cycle. 
um, which and then we're going to cycle our view by our scope box and we're going to cycle it at level one and then we're going to cycle our scope box without levels by the number of views we have instead so the number of so the, the scope boxes times the number of views so this should give us an equal number of things to work with so if i run my script you'll see we'll get a list of plans duplicated per scope box but then we'll also get a list of scope boxes so we'll get zone a b c a b c a b c and this will basically be applied in the same way a b c a b c a b c so you can see that now we're working at the same level of data so that step's really important and then we'll just flatten our views into one level so that this is all working at the same level okay so we have our views we have our scope boxes the next thing we need to do is we'll set up the names for the views so we need to get the name of the view and the name of the scope box so we'll get to element name nodes and we'll get the scope box names and the view names and we'll just set up a quick naming rule so a naming algorithm so we'll say the view name plus space dash space plus uh, uh, the scope box name okay so view name scope box name run and we should get a list of all the names for our views as they appear okay at that point we're almost done um, but we do need to get our view duplicate node from Archicad. Oh, from Archilab, not Archicad, sorry. <laughs> Wrong program altogether. So we're going to take our views. We're going to take their names. We're going to set it to longest lacing because we're going to apply a method for the options. So we need a duplicate option because you can obviously duplicate in three different ways. You can do as dependent, duplicate, or duplicate with detailing. We're doing as dependent in this case. So we'll just hook that up. And that would generate a set of views, but it wouldn't apply the scope boxes. So we need to set the scope box parameter by name. So we'll do set parameter by name, and we'll take these views once they're created, and we'll set the parameter of scope box by the scope box itself. So the scope box, and the value will be the scope box back here, all the way back here in list cycle. Okay, so this will basically create the views and then apply the scope boxes, but it names the views as a part of how this node works. So this should work. What I'm going to do is just going to set a... Uh, actually, I don't need to set any inputs because data shapes will drive that input. So I'm going to close my script and just run it out of Dynamo Player because essentially this script should work at this point. So it's quite a basic script, but it's quite powerful. It'll save you a lot of time. You can imagine if you have a really big project like a hospital, or you have say 15 levels and each level has 30 sectors controlled by scope boxes. Um, that's a lot of views to set up manually and name manually. This can save a lot of time on these sort of projects. So I'm just gonna go back to my dependent view folder that I'm working out of, and I'll just run my script. And we should get our UI from data shapes which will come up. Um, usually the first time you run a script in Dynamo Player, it takes a little while. From there, it's quite quick. What I might do is just do a couple of them and then do a couple more. Um, so let's just do area plan, ceiling plan, and floor plan for level one and apply zone A, B, and C. Apply as dependent. And there we go. We see that we've got those three available. So we have zone A, zone B, and zone C already set up with the scope box applied. Um, you can see we've got that for all three of our view types. Let's just run that again. And this time we'll just do level one. You could make the script work so that it filters out anything with the name zone in its name, because obviously you're going to gain views that you can apply dependent views to. Um, so we'll just do level two. But you can see now these views are part of the model. And we just apply these and there you go. Now these have them as well. So really quick and really easy to set up, but a really powerful script. So hopefully this helps give you a new tool that you can work with in your day-to-day -day modeling and documentation. So thanks for watching today. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And feel free to leave any comments or feedback down below. There's a lot of ways this script can be improved and enhanced, um, but this is probably the, the starting point for it. Um, so thanks for watching today and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, take care.